Was it good? It was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. So you got to work from home today? Yep. I wish I could have gotten to work from home. I, I it was nice, kind of getting over this this cold. I felt better you had today. A cold? Yeah, I didn't know you had a cold. I, I slept for. Why am I here if you had a cold? I'm fine now. Yesterday I wouldn't have been fine, dude. I fucking was up the night before, just coughing, and it was it was horrendous. I, I, I'm running on two hours of sleep myself, so. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to episode four. Of you, we're already we four, made it episodes, four episodes. Four in. episodes in, um, not without some um, recording issues. Uh, so Dan, uh, Dan, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. This he's is, a dunderhead. We're a, we're a team. Dunderhead yeah, Dan. We're, we're a team here at the Attack Dan, Moves Network. Dunderhead Dan. Um, the audio issues you heard last week, we kind of thought back and forth. It could be a number of things until I discovered that. We had it set default to record through the laptop microphone. You're such a doofus. Um, so yeah, it w- it wasn't a very good move on my part. But thanks to Ralph's um, creativity in our mixing program, he was able to salvage it somewhat. Although you couldn't hear Justin very well. Um, speaking of Justin, it's a pretty good segue. Uh, so we talked about last week how Justin and his his fast food problems, not problems. I, yeah, I guess there it's an issue. His diet, um, how he eats it all the time because he works in the city and he has all these food options. So we have a friend that is a cop in New York City. And he goes, so I, I listened to your podcast earlier today with Justin, and then today I had to go clear out some homeless people near a Taco Bell. And when I look, when I look through the window in Taco Bell, I see fucking Justin <laughs> sitting there eating. And I texted Ju- I sent Justin a screenshot. He goes, it's pretty shameful when someone notices you at Taco Bell by yourself. <laughs> Yo. Yo, um, Gro actually texted me. What did he text you about? So a um, little bit of backstory. Um, Dan, because he's um, incompetent at everything, yes, yes. Um, gave everyone, um, well, basically Randy Fastball um, gave him one task, bachelor party. He said, yes. I'm putting that in your hands. I'll take care of the rest. Because he's the best friend. He's the, he's the best friend of the uh, the wedding. Correct. So Dan, in his best friend, um, you know, uh, delegate duties, had to plan the bachelor party. Dan chose about 32 different dates and 32 different dates yeah for the bachelor party so okay. it's you know some people think it's july some people think it's you know december which is after the wedding <laughs> there's june dates i didn't even know i had to text him about when my bachelor party would be because uh, you know everyone was so confused can you do a post wedding bachelor party uh, we're going to have a divorce party i know that much <laughs> i hope so so um anyway so finally we settled on a date um it's going to be in september before the wedding yes and uh justin who of course was invited um had a family trip during that time yeah he scheduled a cowboys game cowboys game so he's not going to make it and grow how being the uh, good dude he's he a is, gentleman he's a gentleman texted me this all right, let and me hear the text. I don't, I don't know how to respond to him. All right, well, let's hear the text. Justin, sorry we're reading your private conversation on the air, but let's hear it, and then we'll figure out how to respond to Justin live on the air. Hey, guys, it's Groho. Didn't know that you had my number or not. I fucked up and thought your bachelor's party was like the first weekend in August. Why like does he sound week- like a Muppet? That's how we're, That's what he sounds oh, like. Oh, you're right. Go ahead. Uh, I thought it was the first weekend in August like it originally said on the Facebook group. I just booked a trip for Carolina for the first Cowboys game of the year for the first weekend of September without realizing... That's my bad, man. I'm sorry. I won't be able to make it. If for some reason you guys change the weekend, let me know, and I'll definitely make it work. Okay. Now, there's a couple of ways you can handle this. Should you respond, um, oh, it's cool, man, or be like, wow, I can't believe you think football's more important than my wedding? I um, I think you should do that because we can live update the I responses. He, I want him to feel bad. Yeah, that's what, I, that's he, what he I'm really saying. He dropped the ball because of how okay. stupid you so are. So you text him back and say, wow, dot, dot, dot. Wow. I how many dots? Three. Okay. I can't believe that you think that the Cowboys and their mediocre football is more important than my last weekend with my friends okay, too, as a bachelor. Quickly. Maybe you're hearing too slowly. I, you know what? Thus mediocre. Okay. All right. Where are you up to? Wow. I can't believe the Cowboys and this mediocre. Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> and this mediocre football football is more important to you is more is more caps. I think more should be. Caps. Yes, that's fine. 
to you than my last weekend with my friends as a bachelor. Thanks a lot. Then send it and then we will update periodically throughout as we wait for our guest who is in route here now our very good friend who Justin um, Grohowski no not Justin Grohowski um speaking of which our very good friend Josh Marcella who someone in this room Mitch missed the bachelor party of for some reason kind of ironic isn't it Ralph I don't know what you're talking about I I know what I'm talking about because you were the only one in the wedding party that was not at the bachelor party I don't there were people that weren't even invited to the wedding that were at the bachelor party I, I don't think that's true. No, there I, was I like three or four. Three or four people? Yeah, that weren't at, even invited to the wedding I'm that were there. I'm pretty sure I was at the bachelor party. Uh, not in spirit, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll wait. We'll give you updates on what Justin has to say throughout the show. Um, now, before we go into our reviews from last week's uh, picks, the story that I wanted to mention to you, and I have a couple others, but um, Forbes did a story about the athletes with the most social interaction, the most oh. social media relevant athletes Why? out there. And um, this person, let me tell you a little about him. Over 174 million people have tuned in to watch him play. He makes $66 million annually. He has 160,000 subscribers on his channel, and he gets $3.50 per subscriber. What kind of athlete do you think this person is? And what? who do you think it is? Um... Probably a football player of some sort. This is a gamer named Ninja. An eSport person is listed as the most socially... eSports. eSports no. is not sports. Mm. If you can sit there... What's and his he... name? Ninja. That's creative. Ninja, yeah. Fuck him. Ma- he- this guy makes $6 million annually to- for people to watch him play video games, and he plays Fortnite. Who the fuck... I don't even want to play Fortnite ever. But this guy makes $6 million a year, gets $3.50 per subscriber. I hate Ninja. But... How can they call him an athlete over someone like Lionel Messi? If I wanted to go international, someone well, like who's Tom, Messi? he's a, a kick the ball guy. He does place nets. kicker. Yeah, place kicker. Hunter? Sure. No, soccer. You know. Um, so, wh- but why would they call them an athlete? Because everything's broken. Well, yeah, like why? Why do we have to call people that aren't athletes athletes? I'm sorry, bowlers are not athletes to me. It's a compet- they're more bowler than. Oh, it's that. absolutely. If I can sit there and eat fucking thirty chicken wings and drink eight beers and still be better than everyone else, I am not an athlete. I'm an asshole. More of an athlete than ninja, though. Yeah, anyone is more. Well, I was I was saying eating the wings and drinking the beer, playing video games would make me not an athlete. Oh, but same, oh I thought you were same idea. Eating. But there's like I'm sorry they put they show chess on ESPN. Chess is not a sport. They show darts, the spelling bee, anything that you spelling bee is. It's not a sport. It's competition. It's less than ninja, though. It's it is less than ninja because the the top spellers in the world are usually children, and remember, I could I could kick the shit out of any child. I'm undefeated <laughs> against and then children. The spelling B. <laughs> you, to, you can only throw a punch if you, you spell, spell your word correctly. right. <laughs> but this like irritated me because then there were people defending his athletic prowess on social media. How could you say he's not an athlete? He's look not at an all athlete. the look at all the people that watch him. People watch fucking Kevin James on TV every week. He's an athlete. He, he's he's he was a high school wrestling champion. Wait, we're moving our lips right now. We're athletes yeah that, i guess you could you say watch, i listen esport yeah podcast e-sport game. gamer maybe we can make six million dollars annually we won't for being assholes we won't i, I can't imagine i kind of want to start playing fortnite just to meet up with this ninja guy and challenge him He'll to a fist you. fight he could beat me i'll fight wait, him. wait wait you're gonna meet him in fortnite and then beat him in a real fist i'm gonna fight? challenge him your to a real fight for. i'm gonna challenge him to a real fight why are you playing fortnite to do that just message him i but i have to find that connection with him i have to become good i it would it be too much if I became so good at Fortnite to meet up with him at some point and then challenge him to an actual fist fight for charity. I think you're. you're yes, re- I, I think about this. Doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? So wait, wait. You're gonna get really good at Fortnite. Yes. Good enough to up. So okay, let's use real sports. Okay, okay. not esports. Correct. So this is your logic. You're gonna get so good at baseball that you're going to cross paths with Mike Trout. Yes. And then challenge him to a fist fight. And then you get rather than become better than him. Yeah. Yes. Perfect plan. Flawless. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So that that very much irritated me when I saw that. Just the basis of calling oh, him an athlete. I hate you can still highlight the guy in Forbes and how I mean in in a lot of ways. Doesn't make, Forbes do Wall Street shit? Yeah, they were talking. They were talking about how his social media prowess has made him this millionaire. I hate just from, ninja. <laughs> I'm telling you, we got to team up and do this. I don't know. I don't want to be involved in this. Well, you're going to be. All the $6 million we make is going to go to the lawsuit. (laughs) 
for what from homeward from bound, homeward bound three homeward bound three that disaster <laughs> Uh, the, landlord the landlord just came in and told us we had to keep it down. Yeah. Um, the we're studio's getting out of control. Squatters' rights. So, uh, so now that we're done with Ninja, and uh, I'm still irritated by that because I also our Ninja. guest, our guest Josh, was talking about it the other day. I have no problem with Josh doing I this. Josh. I just, I just like joking about it. But he's going to start up a, a Twitch streaming channel for when the new um, Call of Duty comes out that he plays with his friend. He's he's canceled. But he's not trying to go. Tell him to turn around. I don't want him on the show. T- I, I, don't, I don't. I hate Twitch. I hate Switch. <laughs> Switcher. What's Switcher? Isn't that a, a Twitter? <laughs> Twitter, you have a Twitter. I, do, I barely use it. I know you don't. I just you, tweet to Orville Redbacher. <laughs> so what? Well, okay. Uh, so the ne- the next thing I want to go on to um, is our reviews before Josh gets here. Yeah. Now uh, you reviewed first last week about um, the wrestler. So I'm going to go into the album that you recommended to me, and that was Bruce Springsteen, Blinded by. I thought it was uh, Spice World. No, it was not Spice World. It was Bruce Springsteen, Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Yes. Now I have heard this album before, but I had not heard it in a long, long time. Probably not since I was a child, but I had heard songs from it throughout the years. Obviously. It's a Bruce Springsteen fan album. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know a lot of people don't like Bruce just because of his sound, just like people wouldn't have liked the Hold Steady because of that Bruce Springsteen style yeah. of sound. But I, while I'm not a Bruce fanboy, I do like a lot of the Bruce I listen to. Every t- I, I never turn off a Bruce song when it comes on. So listening to this album the whole way through, and I am going to try and kind of try and change my grading system because I do think grading the album on a song scale isn't necessarily fair because I have some albums that I think are like fives but there's one song on it that I don't want to yeah, listen to and, the, and there, there's definitely and I think I alluded to this last time there's songs that do drag down the overall correct album so overall I gave this album a 3.2 out of 5 okay. uh, it was uh, right around the same spot as the Hold Steady amazingly enough so right off the bat opening with Blinded by the Light which is now an iconic song that has been covered several times most famously uh, by uh, Manfred Man, correct, Earth and they band, they change one of the lyrics. The cut loose like a deuce is um, revved loose by yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Um, but it's a it's a classic, and it's a great way to open the album because he you know what you're getting yourself you, into with this album. Now right I'm, away. I don't like I'll be honest I don't like the Manford Man well, version. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it nearly as much. No. So you like the Bruce version better? Oh, the Bruce Bar- version a hundred times better. Yeah. The music. Um, the lyrics I feel don't like fit. Correct the, the sound. And I think what the biggest thing you get with Bruce is the lyrics almost always fit the sound in the song, even if you don't like the song. Um, which the next song, I it's funny, I've heard this song before and I knew it right away from a movie I saw when I was very young, which was Big Daddy, uh, Growing Up, was featured at the very end of Adam Sandler's is Big it? Daddy. Yeah, and that's a cool song, man. The story in the song is really cool. And that's one of the big things with Bruce is you may not like his voice, the music might be too much for you, but he is truly one of the great storytellers in American rock ever. And that was what they were kind of looking for when they pushed him was to be like that Bob Dylan folk kind of well, story. Apparently he um he like strongly rejected that early on. Um apparently the record company printed up these, you know, the next Dylan posters and, and he, he didn't like that. He ripped no. them down, he nixed the idea, kinda of like the um El Ombre, correct, cool. it's like that kind of thing. Like it's disrespectful to Dylan. Correct. So the next song, um, it slows down the pace quite a bit. And at first, I didn't like this song, but I thought the last minute really picked it up. Was Mary Queen of Arkansas? Oh. Um, I like the last minute of it when the acoustic kind of double times and it goes a little bit faster. But overall, that was probably my least favorite song on the album. It's it's his worst song ever. I think I can't stand the Angel. Is the other song? Well, I'll I'll, I'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. Uh, the next song is one of the. You gave me two songs to highlight on here. Was the uh, Does this bus stop at 82nd Street? Cool song. It, it was. I, I liked it. It sounds good. It, it kicks. It, it keeps you invested from start mm-hmm. to finish. So I like that one. I love Lost in the Flood. I thought when that one picks up, mm-hmm. it's awesome. It, it when they when it really picks up and hits its stride, it's a phenomenal song. I'm surprised song. that that song isn't more heralded yeah, in like classic rock. Like even Bruce fans, it's. It's like, you know, but it's not like considered one of his like deep tracks. And I don't Correct. understand and why. I, I think it should be because I feel like that's a that's it's about a, a Vietnam. It's you a, know, and it's a radio friendly song. It's too. a radio friendly song. It's about a Vietnam soldier um, return to war, but it's not an anti-war song. Correct. So like it's kind of it's a very Americana song about, you know, how soldiers are treated. It's very radio subject matter friendly. Correct. Plus, it's just a bitchin song. Yeah, to begin it's, with. it's a don't ever say bitchin again, please. Did I say um, bitchin? Really? Yes, you did. <laughs> Shut up. Um, the next song, The Angel, which you had just previously mentioned that to me it was as average as the song gets i didn't hate it i didn't love it but the one part that i highlighted was one of the lyrics he says from parts on 
unknown and i was like oh my god this song's about dark oracle sage <laughs> and plenty of other wrestlers the ultimate warrior plenty of wrestlers came from i love um, dark oracle sage we need to get unknown. into that one day yes now the next song was my favorite song on the album was for you I gave this one a four and a half out of five. Um, I thought the song structure was great. I thought the the pacing of it was great. That's another one. I can't believe it's not on the radio mm-hmm. because the sound on it, it is a radio song. It's a song that you could jam with your friends to. Awesome song. I also think lyrically that is his best song on the album. Um, I mean, I think the stories overall are good because they go, go in and out of characters. Correct. That one, and there's nothing about it that stands out. I just like the story of like kind of like an unrequ- um I can't say the word. Uh, d- 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 when you like someone, they don't like you back. Unre- you're, please, you're leaving me out hanging here. I'm doing that on purpose. Uh, uh, Actually, I don't know what you're trying to say. When you, uh, uh, well, you don't have it. Um, <laughs> so the next song, next two songs, um, we'll go through them quick, was Spirit in the Night, which I gave it three. Mm-hmm. Cool song. The chorus is, it's catchy. Uh, yeah. It's a great, th- this whole album is a great bar album. Like, it mm-hmm. should be playing at a bar with a bunch of people in their mid 30s to late 50s um basically our friends and parents um and the last song i thought this was a great way to close out the album it's hard to be a saint in the city there, there's a lot of songs in here that i i'm surprised they don't get more radio play the, and the album it's a great album it's even a for great Bruce fucking fan, album. it's kind of an unknown album like and like i said it's the weakest of his classic period usually it's considered it's my favorite i don't think it's his best album but, but it's your favorite it there's, is my there's... favorite but it doesn't even have like bruce has a few cult albums like nebraska is correct that. beloved yeah. by bruce yeah. fans it's not even in that pantheon and i don't yeah get no it. um but overall i was very happy to give this a listen um i listened to it a bunch of times through so i very very much enjoyed that one all right, so my album, again, was Bruce Springsteen, Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Um, if you're a Bruce fan, you'll definitely like it. If you're a moderate Bruce fra- fan, I definitely recommend listening to it. As we go on to the movie I gave you last week, let's crack open our uh, cooler beers and continue before our guest gets here. And let's jump into it. What movie did I give you last week? Oh, good. You got the foam. By the way, these beers that are in the cooler have been here since my birthday in January, and they somehow, this cooler is amazing. It has remained cool like cold yeah it's starting to drift a little because yeah, it's been sitting in our studio what's wrong with this beer uh is it skunked it's not or, skunked. or is it just budweiser it, <laughs> skunked i think would be too kind it kind of tastes like um mine still tastes pretty it good it tastes like the way a swamp smells well you got to finish it now oh he's chugging it guys at three two one and he is just about done with the beer he has to drive too all right, and he's done with the shitty cooler beer. All right, so what movie did I give you last week, Ralph? All right, I gave him the uh, Christopher Nolan's The Prestige as he digests this disgusting Budweiser, which on its own would make you sick. Oh, my God. And I'm not the professional, right? Okay, so go on. I gave you The Prestige. What were your thoughts on Christopher Nolan's The Prestige? One second. There's one more in there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. Something's wrong with that beer. That's, that <laughs> and you just mis- you just chugged it. That was a mistake. Ralph, we may have a first on uh, you watch. I listen. Ralph may throw up. <laughs> oh, go, go on to the fucking okay. movie. Um, so, the Prestige. Uh, prestige. Um, I enjoyed the Prestige. Um, okay. Oh, that's 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 gonna be rough. You're terrible at this. Ugh, listeners enjoy because you're gonna be hearing this for the rest of the show. <laughs> you listen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um. What movie did you give me again? The, the Prestige. Oh, I didn't watch that one. Shut up. You just said you liked it. <laughs> I like The Prestige. Um, I don't remember exactly how much I went to Nolan last show, but um, there are some things I like about Nolan, and there's things that Nolan does that infuriate Understandable. Me. Usually the biggest one is that they're very long. They're long, and I get that he has very intricate plots. Yes. But they get overly complex and i think he can actually simplify his movies without taking away from the By, plot the counterpoint as a nolan fanboy is that's what, what i enjoy i like seeing all those the weaving in and out and how it all comes well, together that's the thing i think there's too many needless details sometimes i can't really think of any for this movie but i do know that there something are, wasn't clicking 100 yeah, yeah like i there are a few scenes where i'm like why are they putting it in it's probably going to come back later and and it didn't it may mildly you know for instance, um, the issue um, uh, Christian Bale had with his wife. Okay. And I understand why it was put into the movie. Um, by the way, there's going to be spoilers. Yes, of course. About, it's a fucking so. 12-year-old movie. You yeah. should expect spoilers, stupid. Um, like, the problems with their marriage, while I do understand that highlight the eventual reveal that there's two of them. Correct. I think a lot of your arguments either weren't expanded on enough or... So you're saying it should have been more intricate. It either should have been more intricate or... 
or well, they didn't you, need to go. Like, for instance, her hanging herself, I had no emotional reaction to that. Yeah, and she was good. The actress she was, was really very good. good. I, I just, there were scenes with her that I feel like didn't go anywhere. I think maybe having seen it so many times, I don't remember the first, how I felt the first time I saw it. I remember liking it because the reveal at the end, but I think, like, I just watched it again the other night because I wanted to be fresh to talk about it, is the fact that, that I know now exactly what's happening mm -hmm. is that he was so emotionally disconnected because half the time it wasn't, wasn't him, him there. And the person that she was with, um, was in love with Scarlett Johansson's character. Yes, I totally... So I, I think, you know, and the fact that she was saying there can't be all these secrets and his biggest thing was a magician doesn't give up his tricks. Exactly. So um, that was... Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, that was my big... Like, little things like that. And that's one example... So you thought there was too much of some things and not enough of other exactly, things. Exactly. And okay. it seems like it was just to the point to kind of confuse the viewer okay which i understand for a movie like this especially one that is built on um secrets Correct. and confusion and kind of sleight of hand i understand that and i think part of it was by design but it's such a common issue with all of nolan's movies that it's just a running theme yeah um, of course there's it, it all his movies have that thing where first off they kind of give you the ending at the mm. beginning and I, I, yeah. for me it's not like when you you see the sixth sense once and it's kind of spoiled anytime you watch it exactly. after that but i mean although i still enjoy it his movies don't, don't have that issue for me as much because i love watching the way he weaves it i think visually his cinematography is second to none let, and oh, his score is always second to let none. me let me put it this way memento is probably my favorite nolan movie okay and memento has just the perfect amount of confusion and twists and little things in there other than the big reveal at of the course. end of course so i do think it's not laziness i don't think it's anything like that i just think sometimes it gets a little too bloated a little too overdone that Cr being, christian bale was fucking great christian, christian bale is always so great. i did find christian bale's character much 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 more interesting than hugh jackman's character. yeah hugh jackman just came off um, as very jealous vindictive and well, they, obsessed they, which they is guess, his they character both did. they both had this rivalry they both had this trying to one-up each other to to the point it became an obsession the, the, what, what i what i took it as in um i i will always give pres professional wrestling comparisons mm -hmm. but you have your guys that are the in-ring specialists that can put on the greatest match in the world in the ring but when it comes to the the showmanship mm -hmm. and the the cutting the promos and the grand entrances they're not as good with it hugh jackman's character was about the presentation and he was clean cut and he was well spoken he was While a christian showman. bale was the uh perfectionist he was the tech the technician if you would um, if I compare it to wrestling, he was Bret Hart and Hugh Jackman tried being Shawn Michaels. And actually, it's my favorite line in the movie is when Michael Caine goes to Hugh Jackman. He's a wonderful magician. He's a dreadful um, showman. Exactly. exactly. When he first shows that trick where he goes in the... And they don't even show you what the trick is fully, where it's just the ball... And the crowd is just kind of silent. When yeah. They, the and ball, you know what he's doing, but you don't see it. Correct. Now, um, I, know, I, I know that you told me that you said that you kind of saw the ending coming. So, and maybe... I don't know if I should hold this against the movie, though. With Nolan's movies, you know there's a twist coming. Correct, or always. Not even a twist, but just... A reveal. Not, uh, there's yeah, always a reveal. There's a reveal. So I was looking for that reveal. Correct. And that might have taken a little of that. About halfway through the movie, I wouldn't say I got the exact ending, but I pretty much figured... But I think even with that, if you knew, I think the way they delivered it and the ultimate outcome mm -hmm. made the fact that if you knew, not as... Um, it didn't take away from it really exactly um i do think when you do see it if you didn't see it coming it would be a huge holy shit moment. yeah i know when i saw it, i mean i was all 16 17 years yeah. old but i was like whoa mm -hmm. um and i think i told you this too um i compared to the usual sus suspects correct the whole movie is not what it um appears to appears be. to be and it's the like last, magic trick ironically like, well i was reading about the movie afterward yeah. that they the movie was framed the way the three steps of a magic trick are yep and the last act of the movie is the prestige of the movie yeah so i think that's i think that was really cool clearly great thought was put into it and maybe if i rewatch it that will become more apparent because i wasn't looking for that but i did know i, I had a rough idea what the the um the twist would be that there were more than yeah, one that he was going to frame his rival for murder his ultimate I, I thought it was cool how they showed because obviously it could have been ruined very easily when the scene when his hand got shot mm -hmm. when he lost the fingers and they showed that they actually cut his brother's fingers off exactly so like when they were trying to say like they wear the gloves because it, they had to do it eventually i think what would have been what would have been cooler and i this is my biggest issue is that he spoon fed the ending a little bit to the audience. Okay. Where he's a huge actor character is dying. Um, and he's going like, how did you do it? Or yeah. Like, yeah. 
And I think they could have breezed through that just through um, flashbacks and him, you know, it could have wrapped it up a lot quicker. Yeah, and I think yeah. that took a little That's bit of fair. magic. That's I think fair. leave, explain 80% of it to the audience and let them figure out the now, other 20% on I their own. I think that's, I and you could watch the, the craftsmanship and the evolution of mm -hmm. um, Christopher Nolan's filmmaking because he specifically did not do that in Inception. And some people, <laughs> they were bothered by that in Inception. I, and I think that would have made it great. The, the You decide, and I mean, there's plenty of theories in the ending of Inception, but I think that shows where it was a similar kind of story where there are these multiple layers and things going mm -hmm. into it and every character's reaction is different. The thing that I was happy about was specifically with Michael Caine's character that he was angry with Hugh Jackman I, at the end. That was a cool I thought twist. that they, his character had the most conviction. That actually I thought was a bigger reveal than the actual prestige it, reveal. Now, my, my favorite scene in Ordeal in the movie is when Hugh Jackman has his double that look that it's him playing his double. That also, I liked how they said Christian Bale and Christian Bale straight up told him mm -hmm. I have a double but the double had all the power over me yeah. and then the double like kind of picks up oh okay I'm a fucking drunk of course I, I'm going to be unpredictable and then you watch that mm -hmm. unfold and his leg gets shattered I actually I like that subplot and once you get to the prestige reveal it, it, becomes it more, makes a lot of sense yeah I did not like and it's the one casting decision in the movie I didn't like that Hugh Jackman played his own double. Yeah, I thought I, it would have been better if the double looked very close to him, but wasn't. You could have done it with makeup well enough. I mean, now they would have been able to just ham it up with CGI with the stuff they could yeah, do. Yeah, but like make him make it realistic that it looks very similar to him, but they, not exactly. They took Hugh like Jackman him. and made it look like, like Hugh, Jackman, Hugh Jackman, but not exactly like Hugh Jackman. Exactly. And was, I kept, I kept going. Did they really find? Because it almost it disappointed me a little bit. I'm like, did they find someone that looked really like him and they CGI'd it? Correct. And, like, and when I found out that it was him playing both roles, that. That annoyed and me. The bit. whole thing with um, how Hugh Jackman's character so badly wanted the the applause, he mm -hmm. resented that it wasn't him. And Christian Bale, he's like, I don't really care because it was so easy for them to switch who it was and each night. I also did like how um, uh, the parallel, and I know in the book this actually was because I was reading about the book. Correct. It was um, expanded on greater. Was the rivalry between Tesla and uh, Edison? Yeah, and I that was actually I noted it, that that was one of my favorite parts is that they they didn't dive too much I, into it. But I it would was like a, to see a little bit more of it, but it was cool. It was well because that people don't realize in a lot of cases how big of a rivalry the Tesla oh, and Edison yeah. was, and how important it was to um, world history in a lot of ways, and how Tesla it doesn't get the due credit he deserves, and Edison gets way too much well, credit. I, I was um, I used to listen to Art Bell. Do you know who Art yes, Bell is? Yes, I know yeah. Art Bell. And Art Bell had a guy who was like a Tesla historian or mm -hmm. something. And he said that he had proof. And granted, he never gave the proof because why would Art Bell ever back up anything anyone says? But um, that Tesla used to be able to pull energy out of one square inch of air, yeah. enough energy was to brilliant. power city for a year. Which, if that was true, and let's be honest, Tesla was a genius. And I know this movie of course, makes of course. it like... 99.99% 99 .99 chance that never happened. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's it's hard to say. That's all stuff that's up for debate. Because I know some people, one of my friends specifically, Pat, um, is a Tesla fanboy, mm -hmm. and he resents whenever he hears Edison getting all the credit. Well, yeah, Edison was a douche. Yeah, he was a douche, and he had more resources to bury Tesla, yeah. and to this day, Tesla gets buried. Tesla. The only thing he has going for him is a, is car. a car. But um, um, I did like the, um, the, Tesla, um, the Tesla role in the movie. I do think it made the movie grounded in realism, which Correct. I thought was pretty cool. It, it was another rivalry on top of the main exactly. rivalry. Um, I think David Bowie was great, but the one thing is... Not memorable. It wasn't memorable. It was, oh, cool, it's what, David Bowie. When you're Bowie. watching it, you're like, oh, he's doing a pretty good Tesla, but it wasn't like when you saw, not that I love the movie, but Daniel Day-Lewis playing Lincoln, you were like, holy shit, it, he's it, Lincoln. It looked like Bowie playing Tesla, Correct. but he wasn't putting the Bowie... Um, showmanship. Yeah, the, again, the showmanship, yeah. the, the over um, the top, and I thought um Andy uh what's his Andy name? Circus. I thought he was actually oh he was great as the assistant. And it's so funny when you see him in things where he's not all CGI'd and makeup up. You know, I was like, I he's know a good him. actor. I was like, I know him. I know him. Who is that? And I was like, I know it's, I've seen it's, him. It's Gollum. It's Gollum. <laughs> so on a um a grading on the scale of one to five, what do you give um, the prestige? Well, to follow my pattern, I should give it an NFL franchise or a wrestler. But that was only for the wrestler. So I was trying to think of a magician to oh, rate it no, as. I don't know any. I know That's Houdini. The thing. I know Pendula, Teller, yeah, and, and, um, and the Mask Magician. And the Mask Magician. <laughs> um, um, so I'm gonna do my um, my favorite magic trick. Oh my god! I, who the fuck has a favorite <laughs> magic trick? No one. Uh, Just give me a, a three point five uh, out of five, which is a good good rating. Just give me an NFL three franchise. Point, uh, three point seven five magic hats out of five. 
What do you mean magic hats? Well, I can't. It has to be connected to magic. Can, can you just give me an NFL team for comparison? Like, is it like the Eagles who never won it until the, recently? The Stangles when they uh, okay. merge the two teams We're not, together. I'm not going with magic Three, tricks. 3.75 out it, of 5. Is it something you would recommend to people I'd that are Nolan fans? I'd re- if you're a Nolan fan, it's much must uh, watch. For me, I think my favorite Nolan movie is... It, I, it's so hard for me because I love sci-fi, so I love Interstellar, mm-hmm. but I understand it's very long. I, I still thought, haven't seen Interstellar. I thought Dunkirk but... was brilliant. Um, Inception is always one of those ones I watch, and I fucking love it. I love. There's not a Nolan movie, even his first movie, which is in black and white, and a lot of people haven't seen it. Called Following is incredible. It's it's very dark and it's mm-hmm. haunting. But I, for me, it's probably in my top three of Nolan movies. The it, it still doesn't. Um... Uh, and Bob upset. still has my copy of it. On it doesn't Blu-ray. upset uh, Memento though. Me- Memento, Memento is, is it's a Memento might be a perfect movie. Memento for me. is very close to one of my favorite movies. Um, and it really, the things that Nolan is weak for aren't too um, too prevalent in it. Correct. Um, Correct. The pause of this movie, which I'll say is. Um, Christian Bale gives perf- maybe one of the best, if not the best, performance I've seen him do. Um, it's to be hard. The Fighter, which you won an Oscar for, and The Machinist are probably my two favorites. Machinist, yeah. Machinist is a rough watch, but he's this, great in it. This is definitely one of his better ones. Um, beautifully shot. It's, and it doesn't, even though you said it's long, it doesn't drag at any point. It doesn't drag. The pacing, though, it's a little It's off. a little uneven. The and, middle and act. And that's part of where his interest, um, being intri- intrinsicate with his yeah. storytelling that he's gotten better The middle better act, with. which is where, you know, she hangs herself, that Correct. kind of part, that Tracks. Yeah, it so, doesn't because again, it doesn't feel important. But um, the reveal is great, um, and I didn't like that they spoon fed the ending. Okay, um, but overall, you enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. I recommend it. Okay, awesome. So I'm glad you liked it, and we are gonna take a quick break because our guests just arrived. So hang tight, guys. So what time did you go into work today? Uh, today I went into work around. Um, about 11 o'clock I got there. Okay, so 11 to 7 is not too bad. And Ralph broke his seat because he's a fucking fat slob who is running a marathon on oh, Sunday. Oh, we have to talk about the marathon. <laughs> oh, my point. God. So now that we're here, um, we finished up our reviews for the week. We have our guest, uh, Josh Marcella. Josh, what's going on, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a bit. I feel like it's probably been since your birthday. Oh, that was a great night. In, in so Right here in the Attack Move studio where I was actually just watching that video the other day of when you just had me rambling yep. and I spilt the water all over Ralph multiple times as Ralph tries to replace the chair that his fat ass just broke it's fucked <laughs> uh so so what's going on man how is the range going so just for a little background um josh and his family just opened up um a gun range in um secaucus long shot uh, rifle and pistol or pistol and rifle pistol and rifle, pistol and either, rifle. Either way. um either way either way's fine um so how uh, how long has it been since you opened about two and a half three months uh yeah we opened on uh, january 29th all right it was pretty close five months whatever tomato <laughs> tomato um and how's business going pretty i've good. heard nothing but good things a social media chat on it's phenomenal yeah we've um you know we we're getting really good reviews um you know it's a it's a work in progress we're learning as we go along but uh you know the gist of what we're trying to do uh we've got pretty down pat you know we're just starting to really um dig into what our services are going to be we're starting to offer uh classes safety classes oh nice that's perfect classes stuff like that um you know, and, uh, you know, we obviously, we have uh, gun sales uh, as well as gun rentals. Um, you know, basically anything you would expect from a gun range in New Jersey, you know, we're... Uh, and how many, like, where's your, your competition in theory? Like, um, well, you know, it's hard, it, it's kind of hard to, to put it into layman's terms uh, that way. I mean, we have, uh, as far as some of the other uh, gun ranges in the state, you got uh, Gun for Hire, you have... Uh, yeah, I know RTSP, Gun for Hire. Um... What would you say differentiates your range from local competitors? Is there any big difference between them and what you offer in house? Um, well, there's a lot of stuff that um, all the ranges offer that's similar. Uh, it really is a matter of personal preference. Okay. Um, you know, obviously, every gun range that you go to, the biggest uh, thing that they have going there is, uh, you know, is safety. And yeah, that's of our course. biggest thing. Yeah, as um, it should be. You know, uh, so I don't want to say anything bad about anybody else because I think everybody around does no, a great I, job. I just don't know if like, because, you know, obviously when you come to businesses, everyone has something that differentiates, whether you offer a different service, whether you offer uh, food on the spot, things like that. There's always some kind of big difference. Uh, well, you know, uh, we do have a we do have a, a full service deli that See, we're going to be opening up in a couple of months. That's awesome. And um, what, what's it going to like what's the heroes and yeah, heroes, uh, fried foods. See, that's that's a huge because does anyone else have that necessarily around here? 
Uh, no, a couple of the places have like a lounge, you know, where you, where you can, can bring your own food you know, or whatever. I, I feel like that's big because that brings it more of like a camaraderie atmosphere where you could have like events there. You can, you know, be yeah. more of a family thing mm -hmm. where the places that don't have that, I've noticed. You got to plan around your yeah. meal as you're doing it. So yeah. that to me is awesome. And I think as good as business is going, I think business will do even better once something like that opens up. So you're having a lot of fun there. I mean, you went from Best Buy to Sears. Um, yeah. Rest in peace, Sears. Rest Are you happy to be at a Sears? Uh, yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> the to be best at a investment Sears. that you had in the entire time with Sears is getting a, Josh got for um, our friend uh, Greg. Um, one of the wacky, waving, inflatable arm man tube dudes. That one you of see my at favorite things that you have ever done. <laughs> he texted me and tells me, I got one. I'm like, what do you mean you got one? He goes, there was one in the back warehouse at Sears. And it was what, Christmas when you brought it? Was it Christmas? It was Christmas. Yeah, it was yeah. A Christmas. Yeah. yeah, it was Christmas. And we set it up without telling Greg. And we're outside, like, and it's fucking like 30 degrees outside. It's kind of like rainy and windy. And then Greg looks out and he just sees this fucking 50 foot thing <laughs> just going great. And it's loud as fuck. And that to me is probably the best thing that came out of your employment. At Sears. I was a little. Agree. At that point, I was several beers deep, and, and I had and this a moment, cigarette in your mouth. Deep. <laughs> you ate a cigarette, you jackass. Um, I, there was this moment where I go, "Is this really happening?" Like, it was that part of the night where you're not sure: Are you imagining this, or is it something that's really happening, like a fake memory? Or, and then I found the real, you know, the next day that he really committed. <laughs> you thought it was a dream. I thought it was a dream, <laughs> and you were there, Annie M. <laughs> Funny Jack. story about the uh, about the tube man. Actually, I got a text from Greg not too long ago. <laughs> Um, early the dick uh, pic? Late, no, late, <laughs> not this time. Not this time. <laughs> late last week, Greg texts me and uh, he says, uh, "Hey, I'm really lucky that you got me that uh, that tube man." I'm like, "Oh, did Greg have a party that he didn't tell me about?" And the next text back was, "My water heater went, and I needed the fan from the tube man <laughs> to dry out my house." <laughs> yeah, I remember him telling me about that. That fan came in handy this time. I that was is like, the most great use of a decoration I've ever <laughs> so I'm glad to hear the range is going well um, so again if you want to plug it really quick and tell everyone where it is if anyone listening wants to go absolutely it's a uh, long shot pistol and rifle in Secaucus New Jersey uh, we're located at 375 County Avenue uh, in Secaucus zip code 07094 you can also find us on Facebook Instagram we have a website you know, just Google us and you'll find us. Yeah, and if you go, ask for Josh or Nick, I guess, his brother. Um, they'll be able to help you out. Tell them that you heard the show and uh, they'll hook you up. You know, and like you've been putting so much into you've this been busting for so your ass, long. Man, and we're and assholes because like, we still haven't come, come and visited. It's great to see sucks. that it's, you know, it's come together. And not only that, you know... It I'm happy. Happened, I'm happy for your dad thriving. too. I'm sure your dad is fucking... He busted his ass into this emotionally, financially. Yep. So your dad must be thrilled with how it's going. Yeah, he's really he's really pleased with it. Um, Having known the Marcellas for the better part of my life since I was like nine years old, it's uh, it's really I'm very happy for your dad and the whole family. It's Thank really you. cool to see, man, and I'm happy that you're finally in a place where you actually are enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, man. You know, I said to Greg the other day we went to a concert together. He was asking me how it's going, and I said, you know, the biggest thing for me is uh is, is that I'm after years of trying to find happiness and work retail middling i i finally found it yeah that's awesome man that's and that's all you can do that's what it's all about unlike uh some schlubs in this room who hate themselves sometimes because of work yes i'm looking at both of us so. <laughs> are you looking at both of us you know what i mean i wear glasses so. <laughs> oh that clears that up so um really quick i want to follow up on something we were talking about before josh got here and that was um justin grohowski um, so Justin got a little confused with uh, the dates for um, for Ralph's bachelor party, and he um, planned a trip to the opening Cowboys game. So now he can't come, and he sent him a whole. He asked me for Ralph's number and like apologize or whatever. So we decided we're gonna mess with uh, Justin a little bit, and he said something like, uh, "Oh wow, football is more important than my bachelor party." Go I'll on. Just, I'll just read. This it. is Justin's reply. Hey Ralph, it's Groho. <laughs> Didn't know if you had my number or not. I fucked up and thought your bachelor's party was the first weekend in August like it originally said on Facebook group. On Facebook group. Okay. <laughs> and I just booked a trip to Carolina for the first Cowboys game of the year for the first weekend in September without <laughs> realizing. Sorry, not going to make it. And I texted him back. Wow, I can't believe the Cowboys and this mediocre football is more important than you and... And my last week came with my friends, disappointed. And I wrote it like a Trump tweet. <laughs> Sad. Your Justin is spot on. Yeah, that, he sounds like a Muppet. So his response, which is the update. I'm so sorry, lol. <laughs> he didn't tell you were serious. He said, I'm so sorry, lol. I know, I still feel bad, lol. I missed out on Josh's too because of work. <laughs> and what did you say? Fuck you. <laughs> did you say fuck you? <laughs> Why are you the Muppet voice too? Well, you know. Uh, okay, so you said fuck you. 
And um, he's like, sorry, dude, the date screwed up on me. <laughs> And that's it. And then what you then you then you told them that we're just trying to fuck with them. Nope, I blocked his number. No, you didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's ironic about this, and I brought it up also, is that someone in this room missed your bachelor party. That is true. Dan <laughs> wants to apologize. Yeah. Well, there's video evidence of me for... revealing the bachelor party. You jackass. No, that was me. That's why when I did, um, I made the banner for this <laughs> this uh, episode, and it'll be on the video. And I showed you it's you and I at the bachelor party, and Ralph running in the back <laughs> as if he missed it. That <laughs> running photo has gotten you so much. <laughs> yeah, it has so much use because you look like a jerk off running. Like a, shit. Yeah, you still do. Yeah, That's going to be me on Sunday. The yeah, hopefully ends in a cornea. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, um, something we do have to follow up on here, and this was um, this unfolded on um, Pat Larson's Facebook. Uh, so, shout out to Pat again. The second time Pat's getting plugged. Um, so, he was very upset that um, a major West Melford, New Jersey food establishment closed down. Paul's Place. I was very upset. I'm a huge fan of Paul's Place. I will eat there as much as possible. Um, when I don't want to shit my ass. So he, um, Paul's place is opening back up and someone sent him the picture of like the coming soon. And, you know, he posted the picture. Everyone's all excited, but someone in this room to the right of me, Mr. Valeka is banned from Paul's place or was banned under the previous ownership. And people wanted to hear the story of Paul's place and why Ralph is banned from it. And I even have, haven't heard this one in a while. And instead of giving it away on Facebook for free, I figured why not do some shameless marketing here and say, guess you're going to have to listen to the podcast. So with that, I'm going to kick it to Ralph. Ralph, why were you banned from Paul's place under the original ownership? All right. So um, this uh, this story took place about... I know how to use the mic. Not really. Oh. You hold a dick better. Well, you know... <laughs> You don't know how to use the fucking recording system. Apparently. So, go on. so um, this is back, I believe, is either junior or senior year of high school. I was 17 or 18. Okay. And I wow, was, it was that long ago. Yeah, it's man. still like fresh in my mind. So um, I was golfing with my cousin at, um, remember on uh, Glen Wild? Yeah, they yeah. They, they had the hole. mini golf place. I'd always see CJ yeah, well, they actually doing a, the landscaping. They had a nine hole uh, golf course there. Mm -hmm. And you had to pay like four bucks to play it. It yeah, was, it was, it was insane. So my cousin lived behind it, a couple houses, um, you know, through the uh, behind the woods. Yeah, yeah. So what we used to do is we figured out that they only monitor the first and last holes of this <laughs> course okay so we would walk through the woods come in and hold two play two through eight for free and then take the woods back <laughs> pay to eight bucks for the last two <laughs> okay so um we're playing we're playing and we suck we're just we're yeah, ignoring course. the people we're ripping up the course we lost all our balls like it just sucked okay, okay. still haven't so, gotten them back uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um hole eight we finish it up and we can't go to nine obviously of course so we have to cut through the woods and the way back, because of the size of the course, it was we had to go basically up and down. Yeah, it's like a poison ivy nightmare. Yeah, and there's like there's like some streams and things. And there's rattlesnakes and there's bears no, and yeah. There's at least a trail coming in, but there's no trail coming. Correct. Out. So um, we're walking back to his house, and we're walking and we're walking and we're walking. He lives literally like quarter of a mile away from the golf course. Okay. 20 minutes go by. We don't know where the fuck we are. Okay? <laughs> you got lost in the woods of West we Melford. Got, um, it was actually, it was on the Butler side. So okay, the like, Butler side. Yeah, fair. Yeah. The big, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so we're walking and finally I go, I'm like, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my cousin, he's a little older. He's like four years older it's than like me. like the Blair Witch I wish he looks, happened. He looks down and he goes, I have an idea. And I go, what's your idea? And he goes, we're just going to keep walking straight until we hit a road. Okay, that's that's yeah. logical. That's that makes great. sense. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah, they, there's only so many roads you can end up so on. So we're walking, we're walking, we're walking, and finally it comes out on um, the other side of Bloomingdale um, by the main street. Correct. By like the quick check, right? Yeah. Which is, I'm not that's exaggerating, five miles away that's from where he lives. That's a big fucking, I that's don't know a trek. How the fuck we got there. Okay. And we're like, how are we going to get there? And um, he's like, I, 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 there's no way we can get there. You know, this is before Uber. And, yeah, of course. You know, Even no more GPSs on your phone. Yeah, so he's like, I have no idea what we're going to do. So we're walking down the street. We're just like, I guess we have to tough it. And he goes, I see, uh, I, I know that guy. I'm like, what? And he points over, and there's this big guy. He has to be 6'2", six, 6'3", six, bald head. He looks like Mr. Queen, okay? <laughs> Not exaggerating. <laughs> Wearing a white uh, jumpsuit. So a, a shady character. Shady as hell. And he's going into one of those um, kind of like contractor uh, vans, you know, oh, God, a rape the, van. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This thing's beat up, and he goes, "That's my buddy." 
He goes, "Is it? Hey, Sizzlack." His name was Sizzlack, <laughs> like Mo from The Simpsons. <laughs> I was gonna say, I know that name. I go Sizzlack. He's like, "Yeah, Sizzlack." I'm like, "Okay, Sizzlack is like four or five years older than my cousin." Okay, so this guy has to be nine years older. So than he's me. creepy, and he's yeah. driving a, a and he's pedophile. Little, he's holding these two five gallon, you know, buckets. Um, he's carrying with them, and he opens it up. And we walk over to him. And he's like, "Ah, oh, he's my cousin." Uh, okay. And he's like, "Hey, can you uh, give us a ride back to um West Milford? You know, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, we were gonna go back to his house, and he's like, "I'll just take you to West Milford directly." Okay. And I'm like, "Okay, that's fine, whatever." So we get in his car, and he's like, "I actually have to do a job over there anyway, so you know, it's perfect." I'm like, "Okay, great." So we get in. There's only two seats. Front and side. Oh, my God. And then God. I'm in the back, which has all his work tools. Yeah, there's nails everywhere yeah. and so, saw blades. So Sizzlock starts driving, all right? And everything's jumbling around. He doesn't nail anything. Just for reference point, from where he was in Bloomingdale to where you're going to West Melford, it's like a. It's probably like a 10 minute drive, 10 to 15. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe it'd be 20 because we Went ended up at Paul's. Okay, so 20 place. minutes, yeah. I don't mean to jump too far ahead. So everything's riding around, but those buckets he put, they're just really heavy and they're sliding around. And I look into one of them. I'm not exaggerating. I three, four inches dead mice. Oh! <laughs> I go, Sizzlek, uh, what do you do? He goes, I'm an exterminator. And he just puts them in buckets, right? Puts what is he? Them in is he buckets. fucking Charlie from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> and uh, my it's cousin, like Charlie looks, work. And my cousin, like, he's like, yeah, he's a, he's an exterminator. Guy can't be licensed, all right? It's no, just... no, he's not. He's Charlie. So yeah. we're driving, and the bucket of mice are tumbling, and there's mice, and then there's traps, and it, it's just shit. And I'm not sitting, like, I'm not buckled or anything. I'm just sitting there with all this equipment and shit. It could have gone very poorly if he it, got into an accident. Very poorly. <laughs> Ralph died. We found him with two mice in his mouth and one in his asshole. And he's playing this, <laughs> he's playing this weird European techno. Everything sounds like, you know, Eiffel 65, like... Okay. And he's singing along, and he's mumbling. He doesn't know the words. It's just... Yeah, I, I want to cut you off for a second, because... Because I'm assuming all this has something to do with the band from Paul's Place. Because this is a lot of... Um, you talk about Nolan being, Trust you know, me. telling a lot. Trust me. Weaving in and out. Okay, I'm waiting for the Nolan twist. Go so on. So we're driving. And Sizzlack goes, hey guys, are you hungry? <laughs> There's what you're looking for. Ah, are you hungry? And then he offered you some mice. He's like, I'll, <laughs> he's like, you guys had a rough day. I'll buy a, I'll buy lunch for you. I'm like, okay, this is like nice. guy. He's a good right, guy. He came off a little shady, but he's offering to buy us a, uh, a local West Melford establishment. So we pull in. Um, we, we passed Paul Place. I'm like, this is a good place. I've been there a few times. You know, it's everyone leg likes legendary. It. It's legendary for West Milford. All right. So we pull in. We get out. Sizzlack, by the way, never was wearing gloves. So he was just going to eat his food with his oh, rat shit infested dude. hands. So oh. we go in. That's how plagues start. And we order. <laughs> <laughs> I get like a hot dog or whatever. I don't, hot I don't dog all the way. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. Uh, you know, my cousin gets whatever his meal. And Sizzlack goes, I'll have a hamburger. Just a regular hamburger? Just a hamburger. What an asshole. So Sizzlack sucks. We're waiting, and um, me and my cousin got our food. We're sitting there, and Sizzlack's still uh, kind of um, you know, waiting by like the counter. Yeah. And they give him a hamburger. He walks back to our desk, our uh, seat, and he goes, there's cheese on it. Oh, my oh, no. God. He had he is it, he asked for a hamburger. I see the man's point. So Sizzlack goes back up. He's like, I asked for a hamburger. And they go... Can you just take the cheese off of it? I don't know why they're giving the, all this fucking attitude. Just make the man. Yeah, just they make the hamburger. You, you fucked up. It's so it goes, I order a hamburger. I want a hamburger. And they're like, we'll just charge you for the hamburger. Like, just eat the, the fucking cheese. Yeah. And Sizzlack's like, Ugh. and they're arguing. And they start shouting. And Sizzlack's getting angry. And he literally backhands a hamburger. goes flying against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy behind the um, the desk. Paul. Was, uh, it might have been Paul. I honestly don't know what Paul looks okay. like. But. Uh, I guess his manager owner whatever is like get get out get out we're not dealing with this get out get out and you're just sitting there like oh my I mean, god I'm thing. not with him I'm not so Sizzlack storming out the burgers just sliding down the wall <laughs> like, like the, the pickle the cheese, race in Billy Madison by the way the cheese is now ironically not on the burger anymore <laughs> that's so. all he had to do from the beginning so, so me and my cousin get up to go with Sizzlack and he goes no very calmly goes you two enjoy your meal you had a rough day he keeps going back to how rough of a day okay we had. so so we're like okay where are you gonna you're gonna wait in the you're gonna wait the in the van? car. So he walks out. The mice fan. 45 seconds later, the door kicks open. Sizzlack has the five gallon bucket and starts pouring the dead mice all <laughs> over the fucking floor at Paul's place. And he's going, This is what you get. What you get. <laughs> He he's poured dead mice. Dead oh, mice. How did they not get he, shut down? Like, what well, are you doing? What are you doing? He's screaming. It's just like yelling at him. There's mice flying around. The guests are getting up and leaving. And you're trying to. And he's like, I'm calling the police. I am calling the police. 
So and just like he's to call the police. What are they gonna do? And we're like, they can do a lot of things. Says <laughs> like, we gotta get out of yeah, here. Yeah, like this. We, you're you're literally contaminating an entire restaurant. So he throws us out of the <laughs> restaurant. There's just mice on the ground. No one seems really startled by. It. They're more just angry at Sizzlack. We're walking. I walk, I swear, I hear just crunching under me, and I'm just like, <laughs> Oh, my go. God. How many, mi- they had to be at least eight. It was a ha- three inches in the bucket worth. Oh, Not dude. Not only poured them all, he threw the bucket, too. So and some of them were, like, bloodied up and missing oh, tails. Just, yeah, and... and- Oh, they're so, dead. Yeah, yeah. So, ha- so then, then what so, happened? So, so we're getting the. Um, you must have been sitting there in shock. Your appetite's gone at this I, point. I, I don't know what to do. Sizzlack is clearly. I would have finished my hot person. dog. Yeah. Did you ever get to finish the hot dog though? Because you know that's an important point here. I, knowing me, yes. I honestly, <laughs> it wasn't the most. He turned it into a pocket dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog count. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I don't remember to be honest. Okay. I want to say yes. I would be just in shock at that point. Like yeah. I'd be sitting there like. Uh, <laughs> so we're walking out, and Sis like goes, "All I wanted was a hamburger," and he's he walks up, fucked it so up. So Paul or what the manager? I don't know if it was Paul. Management. He walks out, and he's writing down Sizzlack's um license plate. License plate. He goes, "The three of you, never again. You're gone. You're gone." And my cousin's like, "Well, we did." I'm like, "Just, just get fucking out." Sis, we get back in the van. <laughs> like, just got a ride. Sis like <laughs> starts driving around, puts back on fucking you know Eiffel sixty five. <laughs> he goes. Never again at that place. <laughs> like, he's, no shit. He's like, let's get you home, boys. Because no reaction. This obviously is a uh, common not, occurrence. It wasn't his first word. And what, what's funny about that is I know, you, I know you've had Paul's place since then, but every time it was like us bringing you the food. I was very nervous of going again. I do know, because that was the like one and only time I've ever seen Sizzlack, okay? I haven't actually... You've, I, ne- you've never seen him before my, or since? My cousin moved away. Um, he moved um, out of state a few years after that. So, like... He can't My eat. only connection to Sizzlack is gone. <laughs> so, um, well, Paul's I, place is still around. I do know that Sizzlack <laughs> did get a. Uh, well, you know what? He could have shut Paul's you know, place down. I really wish that, like, it, you know what? Probably in today's world, if that happened, it would have been all over social media. Oh, but, oh, and oh back yeah, then, like, people would have been like, we were just at Paul's place, and some crazy person wanted a hamburger, viral. and now there's mice everywhere. Um, like, he could, you could have got. I'm surprised you didn't get pulled over on the way out because that's just crazy. Maybe he did after he dropped you I off. I do know that he did um, <laughs> get questioned by. I don't know what the end. Like, what are they really going to do? But like, I don't know how serious the ban was, but this isn't a, like they didn't take hey, your pictures hey I'm drunk, I'm, you know, causing a ruckus. This is, you know, health code vi- violations by wow. Mr. Clean Lookalike. Well, I guess we're going to have to test this out now once the, the new ownership I opens, try it it opens up again on Tuesday, I believe. Oh, that's soon. So maybe next weekend we can go and do this. Um, so thank you. And uh, everyone that wanted to hear that, Pat, um, Renee, Aaron, whoever was on, there. was on there, Bryce was on there. Uh, Sorry, I forgot about you, Brace. Um, yeah, you guys can enjoy this story, and I'll let you know what the minute marker is at, I guess, because I can't expect them to listen I'll, to you know 40 what, minutes before I'll, they get I'll to cut this. It. I'll cut it, and I'll release it on Wednesday. That's fair. So they can they either get it on Monday by listening to the whole podcast, or Wednesday. That's uh, I... I'm, I really want Paul's place now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've right. been wanting it for so, 10 years. <clears throat> so now that um, we're here um, and we finished up the Mice Paul's Place story, let's go into our picks for this week before we dive into some miscellaneous subjects. Giants plus seven. What wins? I'll take the Where other. Where they pay, play <laughs> for pay. Uh, where they play for pay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you my movie first. You gave me your album first yeah. last week. So um, the first week I gave you like a loose comedy, dramedy kind of thing. The next week I gave you a drama. This past week I gave you like a suspense thriller. And I think it's time, we're kind of a comedy show, to give you a comedy. Uh-huh. I'm going to give you what is my, probably my favorite comedy besides The Jerk. And it's one I know you haven't seen and I know you haven't seen. Um, do you have an idea of what I'm going to say? I, was I, gonna, I actually was going to say The Jerk, but I've seen The Jerk. No, I know. And I don't think you know what I'm going to say either, Josh. Um, this is a movie not many people have seen, so for anyone listening, I highly recommend you watch this because this is truly one of the funniest movies, and I just watched it again the other day because it makes me laugh every time, and it's called Windy City Heat. Oh! Windy City Heat. So let me explain this movie a little bit for anyone. So this is um, from a bunch of guys that are part. They were loosely part of Jimmy Kimmel's crew about this guy named Perry Carvello. Caravello, excuse me. And they convinced this guy for years that he was going to become like a movie star. That he was, They made all these fake TV shows that he was a part of. And they convinced him that he was going to be the star of a movie called The Windy City Heat. So this entire thing is filmed almost like in a Borat style where there's cameras set up and he thinks that it's all real. And the premise... Oh, of the, he's not in on it? No. He, to this day, this movie was filmed in 2003. To this day, he thinks Windy City Heat was a real movie. And the movie that they're filming that he's in is called Windy City Heat where he plays a sport 
sports PI who has to find um, Ernie Banks stolen pants and <laughs> Ernie Banks has a cameo in it and William the Refrigerator Perry's fridge. But it, the whole time, this guy is such a nitwit. And to this day, this troll is going on where they fuck with him. Um, that there's characters in the movie that have the names like Roman Polanski, played by Dane Cook. <laughs> there's a woman named Ansel Adams. There's Susan B. Anthony. The, 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 the money man of the movie is a Japanese man named Hiroshima Nagasaki. Oh. And he doesn't get any of this. And the whole movie is them messing with him. And it's um, Bobcat Goldwith is the director of the movie. He and he's sitting there. Phenomenal. The whole movie, he has a megaphone and he's talking into it when they're not even filming <laughs> and like when the movie they're about to start filming he goes instead of saying action he goes and act and <laughs> um don barris plays one of the guys that's messing with him there's another guy that's always in character named mole um it, i'm not kidding you every time i see this movie and i've made a few of my friends watch this and they never heard of it before either and they fucking died laughing it was a comedy you central been, you movie. have been talking this movie up for a while it, i'm not kidding you it's it, especially if you like like that borat style where it's it's kind of it's like almost like a mockumentary where it's real and this guy they still do a podcast where they mess with this guy and they mess with him on twitter like he's so dumb that he thinks that his twitter account when he looks at his feed everyone that things people are tweeting is about him and they've made <laughs> they made a fake news account that's accusing him of being gay and these fake news clips where they photoshop like anderson cooper um perry caravello has come out as gay and he's like and he believes it all and he's like i'm gonna send my lawyer at you are you sure he, it's not bobo he's kind of like a bobo a little bit no like he bobo has a much higher level of functioning uh, intelligence <laughs> Um, so this one dude if you don't think this movie is funny there is something wrong with you at every level it is legitimately one of the funniest movies I've ever seen there's some parts in it that happen that I literally was like belly aching and coughing from laughing at and Josh I think you should watch it too I do have the DVD somewhere because this is a hard one to find if you don't own it mm -hmm. or unless you can find a stream somewhere so I can lend out the DVD I know I have it on a server um, so Windy City Heat is what I'm giving you and if you don't laugh your ass off at this movie I highly recommend you watch it with your fiance with your wife josh if you're gonna watch it because it, i've never met anyone that watches and did not laugh their ass off i'm excited for this one i so, need i need a light one you gave me I never yeah and it's, it's an hour and a half long and the, the the movie ends with him going to the red carpet premiere of the movie <laughs> and they give an award from the president of show business <laughs> and he starts crying <laughs> like this is this is all and like I, you when you see hear it and you see it, like there's no way this guy's this dumb but then you're like oh my god this guy's this dumb he went on jimmy kimmel to hype the movie up and everything adam carolla has a cameo in it he the, you'll like this part he comes up they meet adam carolla on the set of the movie and he's in like a roman like a soldier <laughs> uniform with the dog he goes i'm in a roman gladiator buddy cop dog movie <laughs> like, so and the guy never questions it no oh, he, it's good. it's it's fantastic he's completely oblivious to everything and there's so many little things that you'll pick up on it them messing with him about so windy city heat for ralph for josh if you could watch it for anyone listening it's the funniest damn movie you'll see and with ralph what album are you giving me okay so um i know we talked a little bit um, about potential albums okay and i'm gonna be honest you're not getting either of those bands um okay i decided to go a little bit different because i've been giving you you know rock albums yeah fair i'm giving you the bravest man in the universe the bravest man in the universe by bobby womack Bobby Womack. Okay. Uh, do you know anything about Bobby Womack? I'm not familiar. So he's actually um, a legend in the soul, funk, that world. Um, big influence on Motown. He actually was Sam Cooke's um, okay. primary guitar okay. player. And then after Sam Cooke died, had this great career of his own. Um, I guarantee you've heard Bobby Womack. I'm sure songs. I have. The name you, does sound familiar, mm -hmm. but I'm not thinking anything. You probably of don't know that it's Bobby Womack. Um, I, so what, what what kind of album is this? It's, it's like you said soul. So he's a soul funk that genre, and a lot of his earlier stuff, you know, seventies, eighties, his glory time is just I want to say generic in a bad way, but just typical funk. You know? it's, yeah, and he was a trailblazer in funk. Like, if you're watching a timepiece movie from then, you'd expect to hear that in he, the background. He did a lot of um, you know, like black uh black exploitation films like Shaft, that kind of genre. He did a lot of Roots. work. <laughs> he, uh, he did not do the soundtrack to Roots. <laughs> okay. Um, but, um, Your name is Bobby Womack. <laughs> and he's, he's got an interesting... He, he had an interesting life. Um, he had a son who committed suicide. Congrats. He had um, a bunch of you know failed marriages. He actually married Sam Cooke's um, ex. Widow? His widow, yeah. I, that's and, not an ex. That's a widow. Well, There's widow. a big difference. Well, he broke up with her, then he killed himself. Well, Sam, <laughs> Sam Cooke is her ex-husband. Okay, fair. I'm, but no, you're a widow. There's a difference between you don't say my ex about your deceased I misspoke, husband. I misspoke, Dan, okay? I okay. misspoke. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify your stupidity. Um, <laughs> but um, so 
those albums are very, you know. And and what what would you describe this one as? So this album, what happened was he got into deep depression, drug use all through the seventies and eighties. Good old days. Good old days. Okay. Um, got clean in the nineties, but once he got clean, lost his passion for music. Did okay. Not record. That's a lot of a lot of people. They make they lose their passion or they just make bad music. Eminem. Um, and he was happy and everything like that, but it wasn't. You know, he 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 didn't do music. He was retired. Okay. And then out of nowhere. In 2012. Oh, it's a recent album. Recent album. He picked up a guitar and said, "I'm going to make an album." And they're okay. like, "But you don't make albums." He's like, "Make an album." Yeah, I he something in him clicked. So the lead singer from Blur and he did the work from the Gorillas. Um, what's his name? I just looked it up. Uh, Damon Albarn. Okay. Actually, got wind of this and was apparently. I want to produce it. Well, big produce. He's he plays on a bunch of songs. Okay. Um, he actually has Lana Del Rey on this album. Oh, that's interesting. It's, um, and her song is phenomenal on there. It's oh, Lana I'm ex- Del Rey. I'm excited for this. So this sounds like a little more ex- experimental. It's a lot of more experimental. A lot more hip hop influence. A lot of gospel. It's um, a, lo- a lot of his funk and soul influence. Interesting fact: in the middle of recording the album, he got diagnosed with cancer. Oh, was dying during it. And literally, the album was released like a year I, before. This is all coming back. I've heard this now. Yes. I remember, I think I was at Best Buy when this came out. So I remember this one. It, it was a big deal. It's very similar and, to Black Star. Did it get Grammy nominations? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. why I remember it. Yeah. Big um, big album. It's otherworldly. That's all I can describe That's it. That's cool. He sounds like he's singing from the grave in it. Um, his voice clearly is strained. Um, they, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, these are songs that apparently he had written and just forgot about it during his like drug oh, years. Oh, so he went back and he, he kind of revised yeah. them and mixed them um, differently. And the Gorillas, um, Albarn, uh, kind of brought to life, modernized them. So there's a lot of trip hop, a lot of hip hop. I've listened to this album front to back. I only discovered it in January. I probably have listened to it this year 25 times. Wow. Alone. All right. Love the album. So that is Bobby Womack, the bravest man in the universe. Um, his last album before he died, I guess. Yep. Um, so I'm really excited to do that one. Um, now, Josh, I talked to you about this a little bit. I don't know, because you know I see I watch a lot of movies. I told you that if you could think... We gave Justin a movie. He gave us a movie and an album last week. So I don't know if you came up with anything to recommend for me and or Ralph. Um, so... Uh I've got an album for you. Okay, that's fair. Um, so it makes it a little easier. Actually. I'm going to give you a. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory because okay. uh, about a week ago, I probably would have never listened to this. Ah, album I know where you're going. Uh, so I told. I mentioned earlier in the uh, show that Greg and I went to a concert this week. We went to see uh, Ghost, a band that you have ridiculed Ghost. openly I have for a long time. Absolutely trashed this band for. Nothing other than the fact that, like, I saw one of their videos, but I didn't hear the music and that went like, along with it. you like, fruits. Yeah, I was like, what a bunch of bozos. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go to the show, uh, and they open up uh, with this song off their new album called Prequel, uh, called Rats. Okay. And it's a really good song. Um, and that made me say... Is the know, next song Paul's Place? No, the next song is not Paul's Place, unfortunately. This is lack. Uh, so, you know, we, we went, uh, we watched the show, you know, we, we, we watched the whole show. Uh, the next day I made a playlist uh, uh, close to what they played as we, uh, I could. They, okay. they were five songs I couldn't put on there. Um, so I'm going to um, recommend to you guys, uh, and let me pull out my phone here really quick so I don't butcher the... Uh, the name of the, the album. Name of the album. Okay. Um, Are they back to Ghost? Because I know they were Ghost BC for yeah, a while. Yeah, they were Ghost reason. BC, um, and then uh, they dropped the BC. I don't really know the backstory behind it yet. Christ, Christ was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, <Fair. laughs> sir. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you and Greg both said it was a really good show, and I'm sure, like, just looking at them, they're, they're like... I don't need to hear the album right now. <laughs> okay, What's the so, album called? Uh, the album's called uh, Meliora. Me- spell for me? M-E-L-I-O-R-A. Okay, cool. You know, it's a really cool like blend of uh, kind of like a, like a like metal, like uh, an alternative kind of. Cool. It's not, it and I heard they mixed what, in like other instruments, like uh, some uh, saxophone yeah, and everything. Yeah, some saxophone. That's pretty cool. a lot of keyboard. They busted out a keytar in the middle of the show. Yeah, I saw, I I saw your, your not, tweet uh, about that. Expecting. So it, it was a lot of fun. Um, very unexpected what I got from them com- compared to what I thought that they were. That's pretty cool, man. I thought so, saw that Ghost got too much because they are, they're a little corny. Let's well, they're showmanship. It's, a, it's showman. a showmanship. A lot of it's a show. It's um, but it's I a gimmick. Really like their music. So I've never listened, so I'm excited. Um, and I got to give a quick shout out to Justin because he did recommend a movie and an album to mm-hmm. us. I know you didn't get to watch the movie, but I did. Um, really weird one that I wouldn't expect it. It was called Good Time, starring Robert Pattinson, and it was a really fucking cool action movie, man. 
Um, he was really good in it. So be, not beating around the bush too long. Um, it was a really, really entertaining movie. Not too long. Some good twists and turns in it. Uh, some real scumbag shit happens in it. Um, so Good Time was awesome if you're looking for a good, easy watch. And then the album we recommended was Thundercat Drunk. Um, I liked the album. I wouldn't say I loved it, but I liked it. It was mm-hmm. a really cool sound. It reminded me in some ways of um, Danger Mouse. Um, just the funk kind of sound to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely something that, like I said, I, I had it on at work and I, it was easy to have on my headphones at work just listening to it and I enjoyed it. Do you, so um, thank you, Justin. I, I really like Drunk a lot too. Um, do you? Are you familiar with um, Vaporwave? Yes. Yeah. It had a strong Vaporwave feel to it. Um, I did not expect, because I do know a little bit of Thundercat and I never heard his own like work. I always heard him on other people's albums. Um, I agree with you. There's The album as a whole is disjointed. Yes, I agree with that. Um, it's not, I don't think it's... Um, formatted the proper way the way the song but, I, but do, I did enjoy it i do um i did enjoy it i did like it a lot i think he's a ridiculously good musician correct i just think maybe he needs to be reeled in a little bit i think yeah. sometimes he goes a little off he the rails. seems like i'm telling you the one thing though the production on it was fantastic oh it was, the sound was it was great. A, it was an enjoyable album so thank you for that for justin and josh just gave us ghost uh Mel- meliora it's called I think so. Tomato. T- that's the, the dead guy. Uh, band. All right. So, <laughs> band. so now we got a, a, a little bit of time to kill. And I have a couple things I want to talk about. First thing is a couple of pictures I'm going to show you guys. And I saw this pop up. It kind of went viral on social media recently. And I'm going to post these, um, the links and the pictures on the Facebook page and in the video. Um, so this is from a Captain America or Iron Man comic book. And in it, it is Captain America and Iron Man. And Iron Man says to Captain America, still brooding, eh? Maybe you need all. You, maybe what you need is some solid dick from an Iron Man. And Captain America replies, "Maybe I do, Shellhead. Maybe I do." So he says, "Solid dick." Now, unfortunately, I looked it up, and turns out that's just a Photoshop, which really disappointed me. But it did bring me upon like that. That'd be really funny if they were saying "solid dick" in a fucking comic book from the seventies oh, or whatever. But I did find one that is real. What's wrong with uh, What's wrong with Iron Man? I- uh, he seems. Upset. Did they change the way Iron Man looks? Well, it, it's the old comics. It was not as good an illustration. If you look at like there, there's a one. I forget which comic book it is in Marvel, but the one guy he could draw so well, but the feet always looked like mutated. So you can take a look at that. It looks legit. But I, <coughs> I did find a real one that really made me laugh, and it's from a Batman comic book. And this is it's the Joker looking at a news headline. It says, "Meanwhile, at the Joker's hideout." So they laugh at my boner, will they? <laughs> I'll show them. I'll show them how many boners the Joker can make. And he's looking at a headline and it says, um, Town laughs at Joker's boner. And it says, The emphasis on boners has given me an idea for a new adventure in crime. Gotham City will rule the day. It mentioned the word boner. So, Dan can relate to this comic. <laughs> yeah, I like talking about my boner, boner fights. So, what? Like, I mean, I don't want to ever imagine a time living where... I couldn't use boner in the way I use it now, even though I can't use my own boner very well. So uh, I was disappointed to find out about the Iron Man Captain America one, but I was thrilled to find out that this Joker one, and now I need to own this comic book or just get this blown up in frame because this is a great addition to the Attack Moves Network studio. Um, Now, the one other thing, and I know, Josh, you're very passionate about this, and it's a big event happening this weekend in other parts of the world, and that would be the Royal Wedding. Which is taking place oh, tomorrow the at royal, six a.m. The royal rumble, ru- the royal, the royal rumble wedding, the Kansas City royal wedding. <laughs> um, so royal wedding, I could give a fuck about. Absolutely. Why does anyone care? I don't even know who's getting married at the royal it rumble is, wedding. Um, Prince Charles to Meghan Markle, who is an American, um, and some people are because she's American uh, and she's biracial. Wrong, and, uh, wrong prince. <clears throat> it's Prince Char- Harry. Yeah, Prince, Prince Harry. Harry. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, dead moms. Whatever. Um, so, but I just where's uh, the queen Phil? The the queen with um where's she play into this? She's just gonna be there, yeah, I guess. Her old out. bitch. What does she do? Nothing. She wears out. stupid Nothing. dresses and they they all have to wear the stupid fucking hats that look like Easter baskets. I fucking can't. That's stand one of that. my favorite shit. <laughs> <Nordic quote. laughs> oh, he's not talking about Andy Leibovitz photographing the queen without her. Hat. It's like, but you know how many people are gonna watch this shit tomorrow? Be up at six a.m. to watch six, it. They they predict sixty. I sixty people, <laughs> <laughs> just total. Not even uh, just watching on the 60. TV. Listen, I, one I said, thing I'll say about it. Is uh, I won't watch it on TV tomorrow, but I will watch the shit out of it when they put it on Netflix in a couple of years on The Crown. Oh, yeah. They, though I guess they'll have to put it on The Crown because that's following her whole life and yeah. her son. Now, one thing I was wondering is... Dude, um, by the way, that show is going to be so pissed when she eventually dies. Oh, my God. What are they going to do? 
I mean, I guess they could still do they're it. Midway, they're yeah. halfway through the season and she yeah. died. But, like, I mean, the thing that's crazy is, and we worked at Best Buy with whatever the last Royal Wedding was, like, two weeks later, they released the album, the DVD, yeah. and motherfuckers buy it. We set up tables for people to buy it, and people go nuts for it. Who can, if you're over in England, fine. You like that, and that's your people, that's your royalty, I guess it's whatever. the of the inauguration. But they don't have the same power the president does. They have no power. What power do they have? So who comes out first in the Royal Rumble wedding? <laughs> Who's entrant 30? Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Now, the thing I was wondering is, how is he going to do that? He the slams down the queen, <laughs> and her hat just gently rolls off. <laughs> her hat just tumbles like a it tumbleweed. Tumbles. Um, how is he going to do the mother-son dance? Who's he going to dance with? Maybe the queen. I, I guess. Well, what did his brother he should, do? Did his brother get married? I, I don't know, but I hope the song they don't pick, <laughs> the song he should pick is Queen, Don't Lose Your Head, because <laughs> that'll go well with his mother. But uh, is, Na is Natalie going to be watching it? Uh, I don't think she really follows I told stuff. Caitlin I'm going to cancel the internet and cable package if I wake up and it's on. I'm like, I'm not watching this shit. There's this big thing watched by uh, 60 plus people. <laughs> 60 plus and, people. Um, imagine if he just trips. Oh my God. Or, that would make me so what happy. What if he got cold feet and didn't show? Like if that happened, happen i'll fucking be one of those sick i'll be 61 i'll be watching it because it's i just don't understand like the infatuation is there an announcer he goes oh good good i don't stuff. know there's some weird good vow. there's some whole weird thing to it and i'm sure the marriage probably isn't gonna last because the tabloids over there are so much weirder than they like ours are weird in different ways yeah but they're obsessive there i mean they killed princess diana yeah. in theory and they watched her die when they could have saved her and after they made her limo crash um, but they're like they're completely obsessed they sent paparazzi over here taking pictures of her fat ass father who can't be there because he needs open heart surgery like they're obsessed That's with selfish these things selfish of her yeah it was selfish of him to have the open heart surgery yeah. so um, going off the road do, I do you think the queen had to meet him <laughs> <laughs> to fly here and have like now, an awkward father's family dinner. Now, I did have um, a news story that popped up that I want to talk about with you guys. Did you hear about this story about at Tim Hortons? It yes. Happened? Next topic. <coughs> no, did you actually? No, hear I have no idea what you're talking about. about it. All right, so come over here. I'm going to show you this video. So, a woman at uh, Tim Hortons was very upset with her service. Oh, I think <laughs> I, I yeah I see this. So she didn't like. I don't know what the actual problem was. But she decided that to get even here, and I'll post a link in here if we can actually get it to load, um, that she was going to, <laughs> she shit on the floor. Okay. She dropped her pants, she shit on the floor, and at the same time, she decided that because she had the presence of mind to realize that she was an adult shitting herself, she grabbed napkins, she wiped her ass, Okay. then she took the napkin she wiped her ass with, and she threw it at the people working. I got the video up here this now. This is Mrs. Sislock. Yeah, this must be Mrs. Sislock. <laughs> this goes with your Paul's Play story. You think she has a lifetime ban from Tim Hortons now? Uh, I hope so not. So you can see at the counter, she's screaming at the woman. She's probably happy, unhappy with some type of service. Apparently, I think the story is she had some type of... Um, uh, issue with them previously and they wouldn't serve her. So look, the... She grabs the napkins. No, no. She, look, you can see the people eating. That's like the counter owner. Oh, okay. She's untying her sweater, which is tied around her waist, and she drops her pants and watch her fucking brick right on the floor. Oh, she God. drops a fucking healthy log. Wow. She, she picks, picks it up, up and throws it. Wait, wait. <laughs> grabs the napkins, wipes her ass, throws it. My favorite part, she grabs another set of napkins to finish wiping and then throws those. She's and she's like, I gotta her. go. So <laughs> that was a rocket turn. So do you think she was related to Sislak there? That was absolutely. Like, what could it possibly bring you? I love to, her. You love her. You yeah. would date her. Oh. oh my god! Imagine she comes home, tells her husband's like, "What's that smell?" Well, I was at Tim Hortons. Like, don't say anymore. I know what happened. Their service is terrible. Did you throw your shit? You know what? <laughs> Courtney's got. Uh, she's, she's got competition because I fell, fell in love with uh, Tim Hortons. <laughs> You're like, going to go propose to Tim Hortons. You got to go to British Columbia. Um, Ooh, oh, so can, while we're talking about food, how exciting was it to find out about the Carl's Jr.? Uh -huh. uh, just, I, I literally Live found show? out. We were, I was at um, <coughs> a friend's house and we were talking about Carl's Jr. because they were showing ads during UFC and I was like, the closest one is like in the Midwest, I think. And I went to their website to try and pull it up and I type in our zip code. I was expecting to be like, you know, fucking eight hours away. And then I saw New York City and I was like, oh, that's not bad. Then I saw Middletown, New York and literally my eyes like went open. Like I, I couldn't believe what, what I just saw. Middletown for us is about a 40 minute drive, if that. Not, and for not you, too bad at all. For you, it's about a half hour exactly. coming from Vernon. And I listen, I, if you've had Carl's Jr. before and you want to say it's not that good, fuck off. I haven't I had have it. I've never had Carl's Jr., yeah, but I've had Hardy, so fast, it's the same Fast thing. food is very, very important to me, and I feel like I should try almost any type of fast food, and I, I think agree. the gentleman I think in this room I think it's your, it's your duty. 
Yeah, I agree. And just like I said, I think it's your civic duty to try any food that combines a food you like and a food you love or whatever. And um, we have to plan that trip to go up to Hardee's Absolutely. and to find out that there was a, a Golden Corral right there. Ralph too. and I oh, have been for, talking about Golden been Corral. Talking, you and I have been talking about it forever, okay, too. Golden yeah. Corral. I'm going to pull the current mech a little bit. I've been there. Predates Arby's. It, it does. What, your love for it? I went to Golden Corral one time when I was down in Florida. It was actually right when I was finishing up um, helping my grandmother move, and my dad was down there to help us. And I was like, I'm going to take you to Golden Corral because I want to go. Spare no expense. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let me tell you. People want to shit on it that have never been. For the money you pay, the amount of food you get, it's better than most buffets. For around 10 bucks. It's for around 10 bucks. Like, I, w- I was happy. I ate like a motherfucker, and I felt like shit after. But um, food is very important to our lives and our friendship and our personal relationships with really go people. out a limb on that one yeah it, no, I, no, no I'm, talking about, I'm, talking about fa- I'm talking about fast food specifically go across not fast food uh, no it's, it's great it's, food it's, fast it's fast it's, it's fast, fast food casual. buffet yeah it's fast casual fast casuals fair yeah that's so, like alt rock <laughs> So we have to plan out, and we can do a live recording there. Imagine we bring the whole rig into our, Carl's Jr. It won't be the weirdest thing they saw Carl's Jr. Yeah, so I, was, I mean, uh, Golden like Some woman was throwing shit at us yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and a week before that, someone threw a bucket of mice. She was named after a Simpsons character. Sizzlack. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, speaking of that. Or are you, go ahead. Go ahead. What do you got for me? So I got a little surprise. And um, unfortunately, Josh, I mean, you could come back for this. I made a purchase. What did you purchase? A Carl. What's a what? Hakarl. Okay, that doesn't mean anything to me. You bought a word? Oh, I'm sorry. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Hakarl. Okay, what is it? Uh, let me what? read from the Wikipedia. We're not at the fucking synagogue. You don't need to talk like that. Hakarl, Icelandic for fermented shark, is a national dish of Iceland consisting of a Greenland shark oh God, or other I... sleeper shark, which has been cured with a particular formation, formation process and hung to dry for four to five months. It has a strong aroma-rich smell and fishy taste. I'm really regretting saying I would try any food right now. It's universally considered to be the worst food in the world. And you bought this? $27 with a $38 shipping fee. <laughs> and you're going to eat it? Remember how you said We're going to eat it, I guess. Oh. Remember how you said that uh, it'll be a first to throw up in the Attacks Move studio? Uh, I have watched videos of people eating this, and I have yet to find a single person keep it down. So we're going to eat it? When is it coming in? Uh, between six and eight years. I don't know. Wait, no. Do you, I, I need to check the you email. You paid 60 bucks for it and you don't know when you're getting it? It's coming from Iceland, dude. No, who knows uh, how far okay, Iceland is? I don't understand. Worse. If it's considered the worst food in the world, why are, are people just buying it to try how bad it is? Obviously. They love it in Iceland. They don't like it. I hear Iceland is actually green. And I hear Greenland is actually icy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I just blow your mind? No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's supposed to be a terrible food and I guess we're going to have to video me, this. Anthony Bourdain Ugh. described... Ha Carl as a single worst most hot disgusting Carl. it's a hot Carl, hot Carl. <laughs> <laughs> the most disgusting and terrible tasting thing he has ever eaten Gordon Ramsay couldn't keep it down and spat it out although James May whoever that is kept it down oh dude Fuck, I, I can't believe I, I literally had to say previously in this episode I will try almost any food and I, I do stand by that but fuck I'm regretting it now Ansley Harriot, whoever that is, described it as it's like chewing a urine infested mattress. Mm. Which he means he has experience in that field. Who hasn't? Oh, oh my fuck. So we're going to be idea. trying that in the next few weeks, I guess. M- weeks to months. <laughs> it, it, could it really take months to get I, uh, it? They, they said they can't guarantee when. Um, I mean, it's cured. It'll get here and it'll be fine. I mean. Oh, dude, I'm literally like cringing thinking about trying this now. And I guess, shark. I guess it's not like we can't even just chew it. We have to swallow it, right? At least one bite and then see how it goes. We oh. commit. And I love seafood, but this is... Um, I've never eaten a shark. I've eaten a lot I've, of I've animals. eaten shark before. And shark itself is not bad. But this... Piss shark? I've never eaten piss shark. Josh, Josh, you want to come back? You want to come back and try I'll it? I'll come back and I'll video you, you guys can, trying no, it. No. Uh, you can video it. or I, I will not try it myself. I think if you, whoever the guest is... Um, so you may be declined on this one. Whoever the guest is has to get in on this. I think is um agreement. Oh, oh, but we don't tell him what it is. Oh man, and then we can get him to take out his fucking chewed up dick. <laughs> um. All right. So before we wrap up, there's one thing that Josh just showed me you had, and Ralph, I think I, you need a video document yeah. this one. Josh, why don't you just explain what you bought for your gun before you take it out, um, and exactly what it is, and I'm gonna subject myself to this because I'm a jackass. All right, is I'm it, going off all right, so, so go ahead, Re- Josh. Take all your right, explanation. So, uh, recently, I made a, a new purchase to uh, to add on to uh, to my handgun. Um, so uh, I bought a uh, 
uh, a tactical light attachment. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's something that uh, you know if you were uh, ever in the need to defend your home, defend your family, you anything could cut the like lights that. out and you could see, but they can't. Well, I mean, it's a light, so yeah. you know, when you shine the light, anybody can see it. But uh, it's a very bright light, uh, so you could do a couple of things with it. Obviously, you can you can light your way. You know, you can mm -hmm. see what you mm -hmm. need to see if it's in the dark. Okay, but also if there's a threat. You could, uh, you could shine the light in the threat's face and blind them. Now, it, me not thinking about it, uh, when I showed this to my wife, I said, hey, Natalie, look at this uh, flashlight attachment I got. It would just be like a normal flashlight. And I wasn't thinking about it. She looked directly at the flashlight, and I flicked the on switch. Uh, she was not happy. Is it like a laser pointer? Like when No, it's, like it's not not quite uh, that bad. It's just a very, very uh, bright, almost like a spotlight. And for as small... As the attachment is, and you know, I'm showing Ralph on the video so you can see, it's a very small light. Okay. So basically what I did was I showed her the flashlight and I said, oh, look at the new flashlight I got from my Oh, phone. shit, dude. That is fucking bright. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. You have responsibility to do it again. I'm, I'm seeing, yeah, do it again. I'm seeing, like, I'm seeing the fucking thing right now. So let me do this again. Oh, dude. No, that's not good. I'm yeah. seeing two of them now. Like, <laughs> ow, yeah. That would, I mean, probably turn off the the light. I mean, there's gonna be another light on, but now nah, I guess don't do it. Fuck it. All right. But that's. Yeah, I'll blind myself as if my vision is already terrible. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's a really good thing to have if you want to blind your victim. So I'm actually, I'm Come yeah, do on, I do it one more time. I'm seeing stars for the show. I'm seeing stars right now. So, dude, that's so bad. Oh, your face went transparent. Oh my god, and um, I have three little dots. In my line of vision right now, dude, and I, oh my god, that's terrible. Yeah. Like, literally, I'm looking at your mouth right now, and, dude, it's so bad. Ralph, do you want to do it? Like, there's a blue dot on my fucking hand right now. I will do it if you promise to uh, do the piss shark challenge. I'll do the piss shark okay. challenge. I'm in. Let's go. So go ahead. You get it now. <laughs> oh, you look. Oh my god, you just took it. Oh my god, I guess my vision is terrible. Or oh, just... no, 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 oh, I just saw through time. <laughs> He, oh. he, he brought him into a wormhole. Oh, dude, are you seeing the spots now? No, I can see my eyeball. <laughs> Literally, when I close my eyes, I see my eyeball. How does that work, dude? I can't get this blue dot off my like. Put your hand up and just look. You'll see the blue dot. <laughs> oh, dude, that wasn't a great idea. So thank you, Josh, for bringing that. No problem. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say before we left off? Well, Josh? wait. I'm should we do the same thing we did with Grow How? The uh, last word. Everybody gets their last word. Oh, hot take? Hot take. Hot take? Was it? Okay, yeah. Hot take. What's your hot take this week, Ralph? I don't have a hot take yet. I didn't think of it. Josh, you have a hot take yet? Uh, On anything. It could be sports, movies, absolutely. music. So today, um, some big news in the New York sports market. Uh, there is a uh, a new number one Twitter. Oh, number oh. one Twitter. Okay. <laughs> in New York sports. Okay. I actually took a note on that. Um, so your big note, your hot take is Mike Francesa's Twitter account. Now, it's not so much that Mike has a Twitter account. It's the fact that Mike went to the Twitter <laughs> offices as if he was signing a contract <laughs> with a new sponsor and activated his it. Twitter account from the Twitter headquarters, had Twitter <laughs> set it up for him and pre-verify it. I, and just so you know, I did take down exactly what the original tweet was, and this is his first tweet referencing um, what callers always say, long time coming, first time tweeting, don't waste my time with dumb stuff. <laughs> his first tweet. Like, does he know? And then you go look at the mentions and everyone's like, Mike, can, you slap, can I slap your butt cheeks? <laughs> is what people are saying to him. So how excited are you about number one? Being oh, on Twitter, I'm, I'm excited it's for him being on Twitter. Especially since he said he would never do it. I'm excited for him being back on the air. He also said he'd never the be on the fan. The app, no, no more fan, no more fan, <laughs> no more fan. Uh, plus. Dude, I was thrilled. So actually, I have a hot take in the same vein of sports, and this is related to what we talked with uh, Randy Fastball about, and that was um, Robinson Cano's suspension. And I have a major issue with one Mark Teixeira's comments on it. Now he wants to say, I'm not surprised. But he had no issue with it when he was his teammate all those years when he helped him win a World Series. Now he's playing like, I'm not surprised and I'm frankly, I'm disappointed. Shut the fuck up. You played with A-Rod that long, you knew. You played with Pettit, a guy that was on steroids. And Cano... HGH, he was only on HGH. Okay, same difference. And he fucking, he, he did it. And that's the main reason he's different. not... He, they're not fundamentally he's a different. Christian. They're both men. I don't give a <laughs> shit what he is. I don't give a shit. I have a major issue with Mark Teixeira suddenly acting like he's on his moral high ground uh, that he's not surprised. Why didn't you call him out when he was your teammate then? Was it don't ask, don't tell? Like, what was it? 
I, I don't like that. Because why? You're in the media now and you have to fucking play the game? Like, I can't believe he would do that. No. Just say, I'm disappointed that my former teammate... Anything you have to say about when he was your teammate, you shut the fuck up. You don't call, throw your former teammate. What about next year when they do the 10-year anniversary of the 09 team? And Cano will be there for that. How's that going to go? Yeah. What do uh, you think, Ralph? Because you seem like very apprehensive about my comments on it. But I think... And I like to share it. I, I think, think he's very good on ESPN. I think the problem, Dan, is that you don't know how it feels to have a champion. And That's not the <laughs> point, you jerk-off <laughs> motherfucker. A champion has earned the right to what whatever to share to be to call out his fucking former teammate yeah absolutely Cano had the right to use the steroids to share no he didn't he didn't have the right and that's why he suspended 80 games now and there was actually and that's that's the attitude of a Met fan no 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 no. (laughs) listen you know I'm pro steroids first of all I'm pro steroids and everything I think they should be legalized why don't you take them you look like shit I'm not the one trying to run a marathon tomorrow looking like even more shit first of all it's Sunday I have time to train. Sunday. No, you don't have the day to train. <laughs> wear yourself out tomorrow. I ran. Quick aside, I ran nine miles on a whim and literally was in the bed for thirty six hours after. Yeah, exactly. You've been better off eating that fucking shark. Um, now, was it, now, do you guys think that it, this is um, a first time for Cano that he's been using? Oh, all he's this been time? using. Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, he's I been, be shocked. The, the, the thing that was, um, like, I heard that was brought up was because um, he's very good friends with Melky Cabrera, and Melky's obviously had that big suspension where he made the fake website and everything. And someone pulled up the numbers in the at bats preceding Melky getting busted, and he was on a hot streak right before Melky got busted, and then his next. 56 at bats after that he was something like 10 for 56 with two home runs and two rbis so makes you wonder a little bit and he's also been one of baseball in the era where there's no cal ripkins anymore he's been one of baseball's true iron men so now i wonder if he's going to come back and there's going to suddenly be all the like the injury just got he got hit by a pitch that's not like a hamstring or a back here's the thing though getting caught with steroids and I, this isn't direct, Diur- diuretic technically <laughs> steroids yeah it was steroids all right yeah. it's like how pettit well, used they, what they said what steroids. they do with the diuretic is that they test the sample to see if mm-hmm. it was used on the way it's supposed to be or if it was used to mask and they determined that it was used to mask some guy called in he's like he said that he used it for anxiety have you seen Cano play <laughs> yeah. he never was nervous <laughs> once in his life <laughs> yeah that's true that's true so um what is your hot take then Ralph? i'm going to show you a picture and i just want your reaction yeah, the fucking DeGrom and Syndergaard DeGrom to the Yankees. and Syndergaard it's look ne- nice okay, first and off, Do you want to know who brought that up? Do you want to know who started that whole rumor? Well, I don't actually wear a Chris ring Carlin. Here. So congratulations that you're picking your favorite guy. <laughs> Talk like this. That said, <laughs> okay. maybe, listen, um, being objective here, on paper, it would make so much sense for the Yankees, but there is a large segment of Yankees fans saying they're not better than the guys we have now. So Okay. Come on, that's a little absurd to say that DeGrom, and who has like the fourth lowest ERA since he came in the league, isn't better than what you have right now besides Severino. Okay, couple couple things on this. DeGrom absolutely would be a perfect fit. Perfect fit. He'd be the second best pitcher. He's got the moxie to pitch in New I think, York. I think Severino at this point is oh, better. I agree. Although I agree. he doesn't have the tracker, but that's not the argument. Yeah, of course. He, he'd be an obvious upgrade. Of course. He'd be a, a great to any pitching staff save for the Astros, I'd yeah. say, and maybe even oh the Astros. Oh my God, their staff is stupid. That being said. The trade has a zero percent. It would chance never happen. Happening. First of all, I do think that the Mets get a little crazy about we don't do trades with the Yankees. Like, why didn't they? But trade? the Yankees don't want to do trades with them either. They, they, they tried for what Neil Walker last year. Yeah, the, uh, Jay Bruce and too. the ownership shut it down. Yeah, I yeah. mean yeah. those trades. I think there's there's I'm no reason why those right trades now. shouldn't have gone through. Of course, I agree. You don't trade the lone bright spot that your franchise has had to the especially Yankees. when they're that, guys that you can build around. If you want to trade other pieces, I I think that the guys that are untouchable, as far as I'm concerned, are are DeGrom, Syndergaard, and Conforto. Those are the guys I would not want to trade. Everyone else, take them. Take what you want. And I, I mean, what are the Yankees gonna would be willing to give up? I don't even want to like talk about this they in depth because to, it's not going to happen. They would have to give up so much. They would have to pay. A They'd have to give up. Together. They would have to give up Torres or Andujar. They would have to. I don't think. They, I don't think they have to give up Torres, but they would have to give up Sheffield. No, they would have to give up one of their top posi- young wait, positions. Wait, I'm, I'm going. Through. There's no way. I'm not going to say Sheffield and Degrom straight up. It would be Sheffield, Frazier. And Duhar. And um, the uh, German. Florio? Um, the, um, the, what, the, the, the kid that threw no hitter, almost a no hitter in his first start. Oh, um, um, Domingo. Germain. Uh, uh, Germain. Germain, yeah. They, he he would, Germain. Germain. Would, I, I, I saw Germain pitch. He's not Yeah, he's good. not. Uh, he had a, he's going to be a good bullpen. He would guy. just be, he'll a, be a good setup. He would be a warm body. Um, I actually, and they probably would need to throw in either Adams or Florio. Yeah. So it would or be, Bird. Yeah. Because his you get rid of him while his value is low, honestly. You could give up. Um, you sell him on potential. 
Tyler Austin. Like, yeah, I, I mean, it, I don't think P- Yankee fans that want to talk about it. Like, it's the same thing as when they're calling up. Can we get Kershaw? Can we get Bumgarner? The guy. Who Do you know what you'd have to give up to get two of the guys who are considered two of the best young pitchers in the league? Like, what you'd have to like, what would you want if you wanted to give up Luis Severino? Give me Mike Trout. Right? Isn't that what you'd ask for? Well, you wouldn't. Okay, you wouldn't do Severino for Trout straight up. You would do prospects for Severino. Yeah, but you would start at the highest possible player, correct? Oh, you would. If need you're to, giving up your ace for Severino, you would need to get two top ten prospects in easily, baseball. easily. Yeah. And I think in in this case, when you're giving up major league talent that can win now, you want at least one player that can play in a major league roster now, right now. Now, also you have to factor in, you know, how long is the contract? Like, okay, I wouldn't trade that those guys for an expiring contract. No, of course not. But you got uh, Degrom has two and a half, two years left. Oh yeah, no. and uh, Syndergaard's still on arbitration. Like, the trade's not gonna happen. No, it would never happen. Like I the, would, I would make the trade for. I would give it that much for Bumgarner. He's the only person I would give up, even with all the injuries. The injuries were flukes. I'd give up. I'd give it up for Kershaw before Bumgarner at this point. I don't because you have the. I mean, he could opt out though. That's the problem. I'm telling you right now. <coughs> now, granted, this is a gr- generalization. I know it's a. It, Kershaw just does not look like it. Could be the postseason. It well, could the be team the, is terrible he, right he's now. He's an LA guy. He just does not seem like a guy that'd be good. And Bumgarner looks like you could put him in. Eight, you could wake him up from that and be like, "We need to um, pitch us the, the ninth, and he would do it. I, One, I two, would three. Tend to agree. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. We actually went off right now. Um, so, Josh, I want to thank you for being with us here. Thanks for um, having again, me. Uh, Long Shot Pistol and Rifle. Find them on Facebook at longshotpistolandrifle.com or Google them. Um, it's a caucus. Just Google it. Um, Ralph, good luck with your marathon on Sunday. Half. Um, half marathon. We'll be going to Paul's place and Carl's Jr. soon. Absolutely. Um, for you, watch, I listen. Can we all three? Golden um, Corral, Paul's place, and the... One day. Ooh, I like it. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Like, listen, subscribe, share. Go Yankees. Later. <laughs>